verse 6, the woman fled into the wilderness. So notice Israel runs away where she hath the place prepared of God. So God has something prepared for them where they're going to flee towards in the wilderness. Ah, so the Jews are running away. Why? Because this dragon's chasing after them. So while they're running away, they're fleeing into the wilderness. And within this wilderness, there's a place that God prepared. What does God do here? Now remember, I'm, you notice how I'm deliberately trying to explain each and every word at the verses in our main text, right? Why? Because this is literally verse by verse Bible study so you can understand each and every word, all right? Why is that important? That way you can get common sense understanding of your Bible reading. A lot of people have trouble understanding the Bible, so I deliberately do it this way, that way you can understand. And once you understand, give it about a year, then all the other passages, it'll be like, uh, you'll get the common sense gist of how to read the verses. That's what happens, see? So that's why I deliberately do that. Not only that, you want to make sure if my interpretation's right anyway, right? Yeah. You can't just go, uh-huh, uh-huh. Wow, that's interesting. Dude, I could, just, I could have just pulled that out of my unconscious mind and just fooled all of you. So uh, that's why you got to check up the verse. And the other verses that I mentioned to you that I was not able to cover because we already previously covered it, I already gave you a chapter reference. So look it up yourselves, okay? All right. Now let's return. What does God do when they flee to this place prepared? That they should feed her there. Okay, how long? Uh, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. All right, here are some interesting points right here, all right? I'm surprised how many gems are in here, so I'm not going to pass verse 10 probably. So that they, whoever they are, that's first. Probably some of you never thought of that, right? They should feed her, Israel, there, this place. How long? It says a thousand two hundred and 60 days. Okay, remember three score, what does that mean? A score means 20 years. So three score, three times 20, 60, all right? All right, so let's cover this they and 1,260, okay? All right, first of all, let's, and what are they being fed with, right? All right, one by one, let's cover this. And people honestly can think that, let's go through the whole, entire chapter of Revelation 12 within one hour. Really? Really? No, it's going to take a long time. Now, if you're just doing an expository sermon or basic outline, I get it. But if you're going to do something doctrinal, no, this is not something like, let's do, cover this in one hour. Ah, okay, you're a genius if you do that, all right? All right, so let's do this. Okay, who's they? What does, uh, how long is this day? And what are they being fed with? Okay. Hmm, let's start with feeding, all right? That way a lot of that can make sense. All right, we're going to have some fun. Let's go to the book of Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7. I know some of you want to go home and watch your favorite television show, and Bible study is so boring right now, and you're not learning anything. And some of you are saying, I want to go back to that mega church where they only had a 15-minute devotional sermon ad when we were all holding hands and we had cookies afterwards and we were playing video games, you know. I know it's boring to you. All right. Maybe we should end it here, you know. All right, Micah chapter 7, verse 14. I speak with sarcasm, man. You obviously can see how dumb that thing is. This book is interesting. It's endless, man. Verse 14, feed thy people. So Micah saying, telling God to feed his people. When will God ever feed his people? That's at Revelation. He mentioned that. He's feeding them. Feed thy people with thy rod. Huh, rod? The flock of thine heritage. So notice the wording sounds like a shepherd here, right? So that sounds like David almost. See, so that could be another supporting reference for David. See that? Where David was known as a shepherd, right? Or it could be Jesus again too because he's known as a great shepherd. Because it says, uh, feed thy people with thy rod, so that can be more specifically to God and Jesus, so that could be possible. The flock of thine heritage, which dwell, look at this, 
solitarily in the wood in the midst of Carmel. They're isolated. Why? Because the Bible says she fled to the wilderness. See? She's going to a place where no one finds her. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as, as what? That's key. So like in the days of old, God did feed the Jews in the wilderness. Use your common sense. When did God ever feed his people in the wilderness back then? Jews under Moses with manna from heaven. Oh, I don't believe in that. Um, look at verse 15. According to the days of thy coming out of the what? Land of Egypt. Okay, yes, you're wrong. All right, sorry, you're wrong. It is, it is the Jews, manna from heaven. Yeah. Woo, how about that? That's something else, right? Uh, let me uh, show you even more stuff over here. Now, if he's feeding them, he's feeding them what again? He's feeding them manna. Yeah. Now, look at this. This might give a clue to something else. Manna, we know that this is referring to angels' food, right? So, we got the answer here to who they could be. They feed the Jews. They referring to the angels. Did that ever happen that the angels gave food to people in the wilderness? Look at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Man, that book is something, man. Amen. That book, man, if you pay attention to your Bible and read as it says, read it as it says, read it as it says, don't use Greek, Hebrew, and try to find some fancy interpretation. Well, we don't know what this they is. It could be a metaphorical idiom. No, you're an idiot if you start relying on idioms, okay? So don't do that. A lot of it can be idioms, but the first rule of interpretation is take it literally. See if the Bible itself can explain it. Unless it's impossible, then by context we can see that it will be metaphorical or idioms. All right, now let's look at Matthew chapter 4. Now look what the Bible says right here, verse 11. Then the devil leaveth him, because Jesus was at the wilderness, right? If you look at verse 1, verse 1, Jesus was at the wilderness. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels, what? Came and ministered unto him. How about that? They were taking care of people at the wilderness. If you still don't believe me, go to the book of 1 Kings. Scripture with Scripture. As Martin Luther once said, sola scriptura. 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. We'll read verse 5. 1 Kings chapter 19. And verse 5. All right, so then the day right here could be referring to angels. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse uh, 5. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, so remember Elijah was fleeing away. Where? Verse 4, at the wilderness. It's amazing your King James Bible just deliberately leaves words for a reason. Amen. Food for thought. All right. Verse 5, angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and what? Eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake, bacon on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down. Did this happen again? Yes. Verse 7 and 8. This happened multiple times in the wilderness. So it's natural to think that the angels would be the one to feed. All right. Let's go back to our main text. All right. All right. I'm going to teach you the wildest one you probably heard. Now, unless you watched a gazillion of my videos, you probably know the answer already. But for those who don't know, then I'll teach it right now. All right. Now, notice right here, they're being fed manna, right? When they're being fed manna, it's very important to understand where is this manna coming from? Huh, where is this manna coming from, right? Because we do know that this is angel's food, but from particularly where would manna be coming from? So what I would highly recommend, if you didn't watch it yet, is I recommended to watch Human Sacrifices of the Antichrist. I don't know if you've, uh, I don't know if you ever watched that, but if you watch that, I showed you that. Remember, this will make so much sense, okay? Let's look at Psalm 74, all right? Before I explain more and shoot off my big mouth. Let me show some more, okay? That way a lot of things can connect. This one is coming from the head of that Leviathan. 
Now remember, the heads of Leviathan are representing these world powers, right? God's gonna, listen up now, you ready? All right. These heads and these powers who rule over the world during the tribulation and persecute the nation of Israel, what they're going to be doing is that when they persecute the Jews, they're going to eat them like cannibals, which you already saw. I'm not going to explain it again. They eat them up like cannibals. And then what they do is that because they eat them up like cannibals, God gives them a payback. So what he does is that he bashes the heads of Satan, so the, which represents his world power. And literally, the head of the dragon, uh, when it comes out, a part of him is actually edible to eat, which is manna. Satan tried to devour, the book, Revelation 12 says devouring the what? The child, right? See, Satan was trying to eat them up, and God's going to pay them back by the Jews eating up the devil. How about that? Woo! Bless God, man. Somebody throw a hymn book, run the aisles, man. What a God, man. What a God, man. Man, what a way God pays back the devil. You might say, that's ludicrous. I don't believe it. Psalm 74. Psalm 74, verse 14. Thou breakest the heads, plural, of who? Oh, Satan, in what? Pieces. And gavest him, singular, see Satan, who has multiple heads, gavest him to be what? Meat to the who? People inhabit it, inhabiting the where? Oh, told ya! Wow! Ain't that something, man? Wow. So Satan, he's just made up of delectable meals, actually. So that's what he's made up of. Dele delectable meals, man. And God's just going to go bam, bam, bam. And then this stuff is going to come out. This white stuff is going to come out of this dragon and feed the children of Israel. Wait a minute. Didn't, didn't such a scenery and picture was reflected as satanic Hollywood? where Sleeping Beauty, the dragon, and then when the prince threw the sword at the dragon, this white fluff came out of nowhere. All right, let's go back to our main text. All right, let's go back to our main text. Oh, man, that book is amazing. That book is amazing. Now, um, I got to quickly wrap this up. So I want to, yeah, I'll end it here because it's time's up. I didn't come to the last gold, but let's explain this 1,260 days next revelation study. All right, this is going to connect with a lot of the timeline.